can put in our borders and we can also put in on her veil the antique green and that's the same color. The antique green is what we're going to place on our border. <clears throat> so I would do the veil first. So I thought what we would do, while the outside border is drying, let's go ahead and lay the gold into her halo. And I've got a clean plate, and I'm going to get my rich gold, my Josanio's rich gold. And we'll lay a bit of that out. And I'm going to, in the small area here, I'll use a smaller brush. I'm not going to use my liner, but I'll use the number three, my number three brush. And a little bit of flow medium here just to get about four drops in the gold. Mix that up pretty good. And I may do two or three coats of this. All right. Needs to be that creamy consistency. And then we're just going to start laying the gold in. And you don't want to lay it in too heavy or too streaky. You want to have a nice consistency, a nice layer here. Just going around this egg, right up to the halo line. Right. And just spread that.
really important that when you're using metallic paints that you have a separate jar to rinse your paintbrush out because what will happen is if you've done one coat of the uh, gold, let's say, the rich gold for the halo, and then you've got areas on your border where you want to touch up or you're ready for your second border, uh, you don't want to go back into that same water that you've used the metallic paint because that metallic is going to transfer into uh, this area, into the next color that you use. So that water contaminated with the metallic color should be left on its own and not reused for any other color to rinse your brush out. Uh, the same goes with your paper towels. You know, just be careful about transferring that metallic because it will stick to and go through everything. Uh, so just be conscious of that. All right, so what I've done, I've put two coats of the antique green on the border and there were a couple of spots where I overworked it. I just went back, like I said, not to do, uh, right in here and right in here. And so what I had to end up doing was I just had to let the entire thing dry. I went back and I touched those up. I'm not sure. I'll wait until this is completely dry and see if I want to do a third coat on here or not. I'm not really sure. Now, the other thing that I did was we uh, all we were putting the rich gold on the halo and this is three coats of rich gold. It is still a bit translucent. You can still see the yellow through there and I think I may be okay with that. I'm going to let it dry, see what I think. It's possible I'll do one more coat. Uh, for that. So, just in review, we've outlined the hair, we've outlined all the flesh, we have put our uh, enliveners on, and the enliveners of course are uh, the small marks there on her face, right above her eyebrows, uh, under her eyes, and a little bit on her hands. So really and truly, and we've put the design on her veil. We've outlined it. We need to do our letters, and this is going to be in the halo red. And then the edging, there is going to be an outer border and an edge that is going to be Indian Red Oxide and then there is going to be an inner border as well. So I think what we'll do, since everything is still a little bit damp here, I think what we could do is just go ahead and do our letters. Just have to be careful of the border while it's still damp, but I think we can go ahead and put our letters in. So let me get the halo red. And we'll start our letters.
All right, I think that looks pretty good. I think we're okay with that. A couple of small places that it looks like here and here, a little bit there, that we just need to touch up that antique green. Rest of it actually looks pretty good. So I'm going to touch that up. Put that just another little coat right there. Right in here. And right there. And then we'll let that dry. In the meantime, we're going to get. Still, I'm still, I'm thinking I'm going to do a fourth coat of the gold. You suit yourself. If you like the background showing through, that's absolutely fine. Indian red oxide. We're going to do a, a border. It's going to be a quarter of an inch into the antique green. And it's going to be all around, you saw I, I put out a pretty big dose of that. And that's because when we do the Indian red oxide, it's going all the way around a quarter of an inch up into, so about that far up into our antique green. But it's also going to go all the way around the outside. So I wanted to make sure that I had plenty of paint get me going here. So I'm going to use a little bit of water, maybe 50-50 water and flow medium to thin this down a little bit. I don't want it too thin, but you can't just use it straight out of the bottle either. Out of the tube. And that was quite a large dollop. You can see that looked like a lot, but that paint really, I mean, that's not, that's just barely dripping off of my paintbrush. I might put just a little bit more flow medium in now. About five, six drops. And honestly, it's look and feel. That's a nice, thick, creamy consistency. I think that's going to do well for what I want, the coverage. I'd like to try to cover as much of this edge as I can at a time. So we'll see what we can get done. Now, I'm not going to have a perfect edge. Um, but I'm okay with that. And you're going to have to suit yourself whether you want to really let this all dry and put a piece of tape there, go along. Right now what I'm going to do is simply take my paintbrush and put my finger along the edge. And I'm just going to drag this across and give myself about a quarter of an inch. And again, it's not going to be perfect.
in the meantime, we should talk about putting the red line around the halo. If you feel like your hand is steady enough, just do it by hand. Get yourself a really good uh, liner brush. I have this uh, Low Cornell Comfort. It's a 350 script. It's a number one. And it really holds a lot of paint. I love this brush. So I'm going to do it by hand, but you can actually do it can do it with a compass and a pen and what I may do is I may put a white line on the outside of this red halo and And then what we're going to do is we're going to take a piece of tape with a straight edge and place that right here at the edge of that green, one on the top, one on the bottom. What that's going to do is effectively create a stop point for us with this white marker that we're going to use, this white acrylic marker. And what we're doing is we're trying to get a border, even out this green, get a nice little white border right here. So you can see it's, I'm just right up against that green. This is my cork backed ruler. I'll show you one here. Cork on the back. What that does is it keeps the paint from bleeding underneath. And let's see how this will work for us. Once again, get a little, uh, little color going. Just holding and following that down. Now, pull this up. And I do have a little blob paint down here. I'm just going to try to pull it up as 
the edge. And I have to take a paintbrush. This is the first time I've tried this particular brand. So I'm learning right now, right with you. that is lifting that green. Oh, I'll just have to go back in and fix the green. That's okay though. Make sure you take and wipe your wipe the edge of your ruler off because you get white on that. You lay it down on something else and then you got a transfer of color on that. Well, did not work out as well as I thought it would. But like I said, I've not tried this particular brand before. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do it the old fashioned way. And I will show you how that's done. And that's with a ruling pen line. And a ruling pen, uh, uh, the one I bought comes with a compass with the compass that I purchased. I bled a little under that tape. So, here's the compass I bought, and it has what's called a ruling pen stylus. And you can see that's open on the inside. There's a gap down here. This end fits into the other end of the compass, or a styling pen, actually. So comes with a little handle. This goes down in here. And then what's going to happen is I'll set this. I can open it or close it, make it wider or smaller. And then I fill the inside of this with paint. And then I lay it down and I run a line alongside of my ruler. And it will give me a nice straight line like this. Well, actually better than this, I hope, because this really just did not do what I thought it was going to. So let's try this. Get my ruler. Lay it down. And take my stylus, ruling pen stylus, and just load that in there. And it is dripping out on either side as I load it. I'll try to clean off the top and the bottom with my finger kind of keep that going and then I'm going to come over lay it down and start pulling and I ran out but I am making this a pretty thick line a little bit more Making this a nice thick line. Oh boy, that really ran. I'm not 
not having not having much luck tonight. There's a couple of little touch up areas. We'll touch up this green and it'll be fine. Then we're going to do the top border. We'll do the bottom border and then we're done. All right, our borders on the long sides are dry. I've got the tape one and you can see it's next to the border we already laid in because we're going this direction we want the paint to stop right there so let's see if we can and you're always going to place your ruler you don't place it on that side you're going to place it on the inside because you're making the border out this direction all right we can do here. Load up our ruling pen. Come over here and place it down. Putting a lot of pressure on this, and I'm kind of going slow till I get to the end. Pick it up, and we had a much better result there. All right, that's much better. Here's where I want to be kind of careful because I'm going to be laying this right next to my halo line. So I want to take care to stop and start in such a way that I'm not going to tear up that, mess up that halo line if I can help it. Got it loaded. We kind of have a harsh line right here. So what we'll do is get just a little bit of water, dab it off, and then we'll just pull this in just a tiny Pull that in, just pull it in just a tiny bit toward that 
So, but it's kind of a disappearing line. You see what I mean? Looks like we. Well, I know you can't believe it. I'm so excited for you. We are done with this. The only thing left to do is to put a coat of varnish and you may just simply buy the uh, a Minwax spray gloss varnish at uh, your art store and you'll want to put about two coats of this on once it's really completely dry. Once you do that you are going to be astounded at how the colors just pop out at you. Uh, and it's going to become so vibrant. Uh, you'll, you'll love the way it looks. So I just want to thank you so much for bearing with me and coming to visit me every week while we complete this wonderful icon of St. Mary Magdalene. I look forward to our next icon together and I will be posting shortly, this, sometime this week, uh, what our next project will be, what supplies you're going to need, and as always, God bless and keep you safe. Good night.